What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. Oh my fucking god, man! Shout out to the basketball chat group I'm in uh, for them posting this article, posting this information. It is explosive, and I have a feeling. And you'll understand as I go further into this uh, this story, had this been Michael Cooper coaching rather than Cynthia Cooper, I think we'd be hearing more about this. And it goes to show you the double standard that exists when it comes to these type of behaviors and gender, okay? Now, we all remember... Those of, those of us who grew up watching basketball in the 1990s, 80s into the 90s, we remember Cynthia Cooper, right? Now, Cynthia Cooper, of course, was the breakout star at the beginning of the WNBA, which uh, was created uh, in, what, 1997, I believe it was. Now, we remember that the breakout stars were expected to be people like Cheryl Swoops, and Rebecca Lobo, but it was Cynthia Cooper and the Houston Comets, I believe they are, that were the original dynasty. I think they won something like three or four championships in a row, and Cynthia Cooper was like the Michael Jordan of the WNBA. You know, she was one of the greatest, if not the greatest, WNBA player of all time. And of course, uh, she retired one of the greats of that league, and She's, uh, you know, she is a member of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Now, that was many years ago. Even at that time, I think Cynthia Cooper was over 30. But now, Cynthia Cooper, who now goes by Cynthia Cooper Dyke, and that last name is very, very uh, apropos considering the story. She has been accused by former players of abusive behavior using demeaning sexual language and just being a wild-ass human being. I mean, goddamn. So, women's basketball icon, and I'll put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section. So, women's basketball icon and former Texas Southern coach Cynthia Cooper Dyke used abusive and sexual language, endangered players' physical and mental health with excessive punishments, and avoided a Title IX hearing on complaints by retiring ahead of it, the Athletic reported today. It reportedly followed a pattern of Cooper Dyke leaving programs for other jobs after allegations were made to school administrators. The Athletic's Chantel Jennings and Dana O'Neill detail more than a decade of alleged abuse during Cooper Dyke's time coaching at Prairie View A&M, UNC Wilmington, Texas Southern, USC, and again at Texas Southern when she retired this past March. The announcement of her retirement was made March 17th, the day before the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament was set to tip the first round of action. Texas Southern praised her work and wished her success in the future. All right. So uh, I'm going to try to go through this a little bit, get to some of the allegations. So Cooper Dyke reportedly used vulgar and sexual remarks consistently when talking to players. Many players found it inappropriate demeaning and degrading. Some alleged incidents included in the report. Cooper Dyke was told one of her Texas Southern players who had a previously known mental health diagnosis was depressed and said, quote, no, she'll be all right. She just needs some dick. That's all. She called the same player, quote, a sorry ass virgin. In a different instance during 2021-22, she told a staffer who made a suggestion Quote, get the fuck out of my gym, go home, you're a sorry ass bitch, you're a nobody. While the player was doing squats, Cooper Dyke came up behind her and said, oh, your hips are big. 
You got a fat ass. I can tell you like to ride some dick. At UNC in Wilmington in 2000, at UNC Wilmington in 2010, 2011, she would say, wet, wet, after a shot was made, and then motion to a player adding, I bet that's what such and such was saying last night. At Texas Southern in 2012, 2013, a male assistant complained of having no social life because of early practices. Cooper Dyke then, quote, proceeds to get in front of him on her knees and pretty much act like she was giving him oral sex. When one player was slow running a drill, Cooper Dyke told the team it was because she was, quote, getting dicked down all the time. At most schools where she coached, she called at least one play hot sex and often called players retarded, black ass child, bitch, pussy, and dumbass. She also pressured players to practice despite not being cleared by doctors after injury. A player at USC, where Cooper Dyke won two national titles as a, as a player, told the athletic to coach, quote, mentally and emotionally terrorized us. Players said she ruined basketball for them and they bonded together to, quote, protect each other's sanity. One player said, told the athletic, I was a mess, and not a day went by that I didn't think about taking my life or even had an idea to do it. I even had an idea to do it at Cynthia's house so she could understand what a devastating impact she had on me. Um, look, I thought about this one. I thought about this one before I did the video. I thought about it long and hard. <laughs> Long and hard. Um, she liked that one, wouldn't she? I think she'd be fun to work for, Cynthia Cooper. But I'm different. <laughs> um, look, trying to keep my male sexuality out of this. <clears throat> That's very inappropriate what she's doing. Okay, it is. It's very inappropriate, especially in today's climate. And in any circumstance, she should be fired. She should have been fired a long time ago. Because um, we got to be consistent. Because, you know, had this been hell. I mean, I noticed that she's not of the same notoriety, but she's basically a top. I would, I'm, I'm, I'm just going off of what I remember. I don't follow the WNBA anymore, but I would reckon she's at least a top five WNBA player, right? So this would be the equivalency of a LeBron or somebody or Magic. Let's just go with Magic, even though I remember her being a scorer. Let's just go with Magic. Let's say Magic was a coach somewhere, and he engaged in this type of behavior. You don't think this would be all over ESPN? But I understand there's a different level of celebrity with Magic Johnson and Cynthia Cooper, a far different level. I get all of that. But at the end of the day, let's just even the playing field a little bit. Let's say this was Michael Cooper instead of Cynthia Cooper. This will still be on ESPN. This will still be on ESPN. And they would be degrading him and, and, and he would be the worst human being in the world. So why is it okay for Cynthia Cooper to say this type of shit? And I don't know if ESPN or Fox Sports has touched on it. I doubt it. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, this is the type of shit that, you know, and I'm going to tell you something else too. This is part of that type of culture in the WNBA that goes on that people don't want to talk about. See, a lot of people are always trying to clean up the NBA and male toxicity and all this type of shit, right? But this is the shit 
that goes on in the WNBA when young, a bunch of young women, or women in general, in any sport, are talking. They talk trash just as much as men, if not worse. So this term, male toxicity, I've always looked upon it as just an attack on black men. It's always geared toward us whenever there's a situation where, you know, someone else who's that's a male, whatever other race, it's not the same energy. Uh, people don't really kind of go at that person as much. Everything's done silently. Well, whatever. I'm not trying to make it about, about that. But at the end of the day, this goes to show you how each gender is not treated equally when it comes to these type of behaviors. Why was she able to do this for so long for so many different programs and still be able to retire unscathed? Now, having said all of that, right, and I'm not trying to defend her, but Cynthia Cooper is 59 years old. All right, 59 years old, so she was born, what, 1962, 63? Okay, I think it was 63. Yeah, I think she was 34 when the WNBA started. That's about right. So Cynthia Cooper was born in 1963, the same year as Michael Jordan, right? And the reason why I bring that up is she comes from a different generation. And I'm on the tail end of that generation. The things that my old coach, Coach Washington, when I was in, in middle school, the things that he would say to us would today get him terminated. What do I mean by that? Um, I specifically remember him calling me uh, fat ass. Because <laughs> I was fat as shit back then. Big fat motherfucker. Uh, little kid. Fat ass. Uh, any kid that was big, he'd pick on you. If you were dark skinned and big, he would pick on you. Um, he, he, if he thought you were, if you were half assing it, he would call you a dummy. That was his favorite thing. A stupid. A dummy. Stupid. And we were just built different. I'm sorry. We were just built different. And it never bothered me like that. I mean, that's just what we had to deal with. So what I'm saying is Cynthia Cooper is probably replicating or uh, she's probably replicating a lot of what she had to deal with as far as her coaches. Now, some of the shit she's probably doing, maybe it's from ego. The sexual shit, I mean, look, man. <laughs> I, now, that, now that, I don't know. That I can't condone. But I do know this. Um, if Nick Saban and some of these other coaches lose their job, you know, now it's too late for her, but it should prevent her from being hired again. Now, I think she's retired, so she, you know, it is what it is. But these are some things that should be brought up whenever she's interviewed from now on. Like, do you have anything to say? Uh, what, what, are, what are behind these allegations? Don't just interview her and act like this shit never happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the things that pissed me off is somebody like her can go the rest of her life and a mainstream sports media will never bring this shit up. Mike Tyson, however, who almost all of us have the common sense to know he was railroaded with that rape shit. You'll have some big applehead coon like that dude bring that up for no fucking reason. I think he was in Canada when the guy, you know, brought up, well, what was it like, you know, uh, you know, being a true registered sex offender? Uh, do you think that's baggage for you, Mike? Look, man, uh, 
I'm just saying, you, you come across as a good guy, but ultimately you're a fucking scumbag. Oh, come on, Mike. Don't be like, no, 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 you, you, you're a fucking scumbag. <laughs> I mean, why would you bring that up? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to change my life. I'm trying to be a good person, and you bring that up. Like, you know, you, you're a fucking scumbag, man. Fuck you. No, but, you know what I'm saying, like, um, look, man, I know this video's going a little bit too long, but, um, yeah, it, 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 you know, this type of behavior cannot be condoned at all, period. I mean, you can't have two different sets of standards, man. But tell me what you guys think.